basically, again, what I've talked to with you guys is what I told you, step number one, write each inequality in slope-intercept form. Well, there's basically two equations you can write in slope-intercept form. These are just vertical and horizontal lines. So I'm going to transform that equation, and I'm going to transform this equation. So here I have x plus 2y is less than or equal to 9. To write it in slope-intercept form, you have to solve for y. So here, you guys can see my y is being multiplied by 2, and I'm adding the x. So I subtract the x on both sides. I'm left with 2y is less than or equal to a negative x plus 9. Okay. Now I need to undo multiplying by 2, so I divide by 2. Remember, you're dividing both. Jesse. <laughs> so, um, so you remember you're, both those terms, you're dividing by 2, right? So you've got to divide both of them. So remember, there is a 1 in front of this x. So really, you're dividing negative 1 divided by 2 and 9 divided by 2. So y is less than or equal to a negative 1 half x. And then when graphing, I like to use decimals. 9 divided by 2, if you guys check it with your calculator, is the same thing as 4.5. All right, this is the one time I, I am OK with using decimals, because I think it's easier to graph decimals than fractions. But you don't have to convert it. Over here, I will have 3x plus y is less than or equal to 7. Subtract 3x. y is less than or equal to a negative 3x plus 7. Does everybody follow me with what I've done so far? This is nothing new that we've covered. It's just solving for y. I know if you have trouble with this, you just need to practice. All right, so now. We have three, four equations we're going to graph. So first equation has a y-intercept at 7 and a slope of negative 3. I want a black. Has a slope of negative 3 over 1. So I go up to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I go 1, 2, 3. I go down 3 to the right 1 down 3 to the right 1, um, down 3 to the right 1. So it's going to look something like that. It's less than or equal to. So I know that since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to shade below the line. right? Remember we talked about that. You can use test points, but ladies and gentlemen, since you're graphing four of them, it's going to take a while. right? Get used to our shortcuts. This graph, x is greater than or equal to 0, that is just a vertical line at x equals 0. Well, all x values that are greater than 0 are going to be all the x values to the right. So I'm going to shade to the right. y is greater than or equal to 0. That's a horizontal line. And all values of y that are greater than 0 are going to be above. And the last one is 4.5. Um, plus negative 1 half x. So I go up to 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4.5 is in between. Then I go down 1 to the right 2. 1, 2. You guys can see it looks like it intersects right at that point. Then that is less than, so it's going to shade below. Okay. So what you guys can do is determine that my feasible region is this little shape right here. Okay, So if you have a feasible region, now we need to identify the vertices. So the vertices are where each and every point where your um, inequalities intersect. So the first point that I have here is 0, 4.5. That was the y-intercept of that equation, right? It intersects at the y-intercept right there. The next point was the intersection of these two lines, which was um, positive 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have 1, 4. The next intersection is at 0, 0. And then the last intersection is at 1, 2. It's not 2. It's not 3. I'm going to say this is, um, it's in between. So it's not 1 third. So let's just say uh, 2.3. Our, our, um, I think the answer in the book was 7 thirds, 0. OK? Um, now, hold on. So the last except, so the last problem, so does everybody see what I did? That's what I wanted you guys to do from step three. The last step, the only thing new that you guys are really learning is now we've got to evaluate for the objective function. 
in the objective function they said is they want you to evaluate for p, which is they want you to find the maximum of 2x plus y. They want you to find the max. So now, do you guys see how I have four coordinate points? Yes? So what you're going to do, hold on, I still got time. What you're simply going to do is plug in each and every one of these points for x and y and determine which one gives you the maximum p value. So let's do the first point. First point would be 2 times 0 plus 4.5. Well, that equals 4.5, right? Next point is 2 times 1 plus 4. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6. The next one is 2 times 0 plus 0. Well, that's just going to give you 0. And the last one is going to be 2 times uh, 7 thirds um, plus 0. Well, 2 times 7 thirds is going to be 14 over 3, which would be 4 and 2 thirds which is like 4.66 repeating. So what is going to be my largest value? The 1 comma 4, right? That gives me my maximum value p. So the max vertice is at 1 comma 4, where p is equal to 6. Does everybody see that? Some questions I'm going to ask you for max. Some are going to ask you for min. Okay? Some will ask you for both max and min. Now, one last thing. Hold on, hold on. I don't like doing this, but I had to spend